Hey guys, what is up and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm back with another really highly requested video that you guys wanted to see, which is how to care for an orchid mantis. So I'm going to basically explain to you guys everything I know, how I keep mine, and yeah, it's been going really well for me in the past three or four years. So first up, I do want to mention that all clips I'm using in this video are from past orchid mantis that I had. In this very second, I don't have any. My previous ones were all females, so the generation died with them. And um, yeah, they have died recently, so I am getting new orchid mantis either next week or the week after. Um, and yeah, but in this very second, I do not have any, but I really wanted to make this video now. So the orchid mantis is a quite large species of mantis. At least the females do get quite large. Their adult size is about seven to nine centimeters, whereas the males only get about two to three centimeters. So they have a very, very large size difference. The females also get much older than the males, um, whereas the males usually die just a few weeks after the adult mold. Females often live month and month past the adult mold. So for me, my oldest female was somewhere between 12 and 13 months old, um, whereas males, they just die quite fast, depending also on the temperature you've always kept them at. Um, obviously, they'll live longer if you've kept them cooler, but the average lifespan is about eight to nine months for this species. Also, this is a species that you cannot group house past very, very young nymphs, somewhere in the third instar maybe. I just wouldn't group house them at all. They are quite highly cannibalistic, so you really want to be sure to not keep them together. And also, if you're trying to have them mate, be very careful with your male because he can easily be snatched by the female. So now that we have some basic facts down, for the actual care for these mantis, it is very important you get them a properly sized enclosure. When they are very young and small, you do not want to get a too large enclosure for a small mantis because it will get lost in there and not be able to find its food and since not be able to grow properly. A very large enclosure for a very small mantis is very hard to properly care for it. So upgrade the enclosure as your mantis grows, um, maybe two or three different enclosures depending on your mantis size. The end enclosure for a female orchid mantis I'd say should be maybe a 30 cube, a little bit bigger, 30 centimeters on all sides, maybe a little larger would be better. Generally for praying mantis, you always have to go two times two times three the size of the mantis so two times the mantis in width width two times the mantis in depth and then in height three times the mantis length is what you should always go for but in my opinion it is a little bit too small if you go with those measurements but it is what is recommended to at least give your mantis Another thing with the enclosure that is important is that you make sure you have a proper airflow Airflow should be the most important thing in your mantis enclosure. You cannot use some glass jar with nothing. You have to have an enclosure. The air can flow through properly. Praying mantis and insects in general don't breathe like us human beings. It's um, very important that there is enough oxygen, otherwise your mantis won't survive for very long. So now for temperatures. The orchid mantis should be kept anywhere between 25 and 35 degrees Celsius. I will put the Fahrenheit somewhere on the screen so you guys know that as well. Um, perfect, I would say, is between 28 and maybe 30 degrees Celsius. Um, whereas you should always keep the males a little bit cooler at about 18 degrees Celsius. Since if they are the same age as your females, they will grow up way faster. The females have two more molds to do than the males and then also have a six week period before they are sex sexually mature. So keeping the male cooler will just ensure that they will, the male won't die before the female is mature. You can achieve these temperatures either by using um, a heat cable or a lamp or anything really. But with a praying mantis, I would always recommend a heat mat outside of the enclosure inside could easily cook the mantis, so make sure it is outside of the enclosure. Um, a heat mat just doesn't really do it well for a praying mantis or an insect in general as they instinctively go up if they're cold and go down if they're warm and a heat mat would just basically be the exact opposite as the warmth would come from the bottom or from the side and that just doesn't work properly for how an insect behaves when it seeks a specific temperature. So in my opinion, it's always best to use a lamp for an insect. 
The humidity should be kept somewhere between 60 and 80 percent. You should keep the nymphs, the younger nymphs, a little bit on the less humid side and the adults a little higher. But I would still spray them down lightly, very lightly once a day because they drink all the time. For me, the nymphs drink every day if I spray them every day. Of course, you shouldn't go for a crazy spray, maybe just one little spritz every single day so they can have a drink. Um, but yeah, make sure the humidity is right as well. Humidity and airflow are very important for this species. So that's something you should really pay attention to. For feeding, um, anything depending on the instar they are is fruit flies, house flies, blue bottle flies, locusts, anything really. I would just recommend not to use crickets. I have been having issues with crickets and I also know that they're not that great for your praying mantis. So if you can avoid it, do not feed them crickets. And if you have to, try to really feed the crickets well before giving them to your praying mantis and be sure you give them good food and nothing that could be toxic to your mantis. But I would always just recommend not giving crickets at all. It is way better if you just use anything but crickets. Flying, anything that can fly is perfect because that's what praying mantis go for in the wild and that's what they can usually eat. They also sometimes like a snack of honey or banana, but that's something you shouldn't give them too often, maybe once or twice a month, just a little drop of honey and a little tiny piece of banana. Um, their bodies aren't made to um, digest carbs, but they do like it as a little treat, so you can give it to them occasionally, but just don't give it to them a lot. So in order to sex your orchid mantis, there's a few different methods you can use. One of them would be counting their abdominal segments. Um, you can do that by looking at the back of their abdomen. You will see a few different segments on the back that you can just count. Females will have six, whereas males will have eight, and that's a very easy way to tell already early on. Another way is that the orchid mantis has a little ring around its neck. For females, that will be yellow. For males, it will be brown. That you can also tell sort of early on. It's a little hard to see when they're very small, though. Uh, but that's a good way to tell as well. Then there is the option of looking at the petals on their legs. They have, um, on the back of their legs, they have a little bit thing like that looks like a petal, like a flower petal. And um, for females, it's very large and it's round. And for the males, it's very slim and small. So that's how you can tell. And of course, a, a very easy indicator a little bit later on is the size difference. Females will grow really, really large, but you can't see that super early on, maybe from the fifth instar or something, you will notice the size difference and that's the dead giveaway which species you have, which species, which gender you have. And I think I've covered everything with that. I hope I did. If you guys have any more questions or I can help you in any other way, please just let me know and I will do my best to answer your questions. And yeah, I hope I could help you guys and I hope I see you again soon. Mm -hmm.